Colm, congratulations. A very, very well-deserved uh, award in recognition of your outstanding contribution to racing down through the years. It's a great privilege, a great honour for me to uh, be the recipient of this, you know, great accolade from the Irish racing industry, from Horse Racing Ireland and from everybody, I suppose, associated uh, with the sport for which, like yourself and like so many of our friends and colleagues here today, uh, we all have, uh, have a great love and a great passion. Um, as you say, it's been a roller coaster ever since uh, September 1989 when myself and my great friend, the late Virwin Jones, if you like, embarked upon the whole business of sports news coverage along with that of the role of newscaster in RTE. But it certainly brought us into contact with all the major sporting organisations in Ireland, in Gaelic football, in rugby, in soccer, in golf, and of course, particularly in racing too. I suppose, uh, as you would be inclined to agree, each of us who works in the area of sport tends to specialise in one, or if you're lucky, two areas. You're your one or two areas of real speciality because it's so difficult to be, if you like, conversant with every aspect of sport across the broad, broad spectrum, such uh, as, as, as the game demands in broadcasting demands of one today. So we all have our specialities, we all have our passions, and I suppose, I have to confess, right from a very tender and early age back in Moulton County, Westmead, racing was my particular passion. I always had an interest in it, always had a love for it, always had a great love for the people in it and for the stories behind the people in it. And I suppose, as a result, I encountered some wonderful people, magnificent people, really, and hopefully unearthed uh, a few good stories along the way. From a National Hunt perspective, it was probably Imperial Call kicked off the, the glory days of the, the past number of years in Irish racing. Yes, Imperial Call was a huge story, winning the Cheltenham Gold Cup after a, a, a hunger period of so many years. But uh, in terms of a horse, I think, Dennis, that connected with the mainstream, the ordinary uh, folk memory in this country, I have to say one of my favourite stories to cover was that of Denoli. When he emerged on the race course as a young bumper performer way back when in Nace, when he made his first appearance in a Nace bumper, and when he suddenly came on and won one race after another, and suddenly he attracted all of our interest. And I remember going down in the very early days when trainer Tom Foley, who was a tremendous uh, character in himself, a great natural for television or radio, such was his ordinary down-to-earth approach to anything that he was asked to do in life. But the story of Tom Foley and Denoli and, of course, Dan O'Neill, the bone setter down there in Michel in County Carlow, was a wonderful, wonderful story. Denoli became the people's champion. He became a folk hero. He was the new boy on the block who was going into the ring at Cheltenham to take on the big kids from the powerful stables. And I got across that story from very, very early on. And I think there was something about the story, a feature. You know how once in a blue moon we all do a feature that you really, really like. Mine ran to all of three minutes and 26 seconds, which is an eternity in television broadcasting. But I think the, the ultimate accolade, as far as I was concerned, was that Edmund Hall, our now director of news, but who was then the programme editor of the 6-1 News, insisted that the entire feature be run as a kicker story on the 9 o'clock news that night. And that was not, no, no credit to me. I'm not claiming any credit for that. That was all down to the personality of Tom Foley and the wonderful sort of underdog story that was represented by Denoli. And I was very proud of that story. I was delighted to meet Tom Foley and to this day he remains one of my very, very favourite people in, in the world of racing. In the last couple of years we've seen the emergence of See the Stars and he was a horse for the people and a horse for a generation. Well, absolutely there. You put your finger on it, though, where National Hunt is concerned. People, ordinary Irish people, particularly ordinary Irish rural folk, connect with the National Hunt because, you know, the farmer out the road from uh, Michel or from Charleville or from Mallow or Moat or Clare or wheresoever can dream of ho uh, having perhaps a horse on a bit of land or if not a horse unto himself, well, then maybe the leg of a horse with five or six pals who are like-minded in the area. And they'll go to their local pub at the weekend and they'll talk about the fortunes of this particular horse. They'll follow the fortunes of this particular horse and they're willing to throw a few quid into the venture and if they win they win and if they lose well they're quite resigned to their fate in other words they've budgeted for this experience and hopefully at the very very least they'll have a very good and memorable adventure but where see the stars was concerned you were talking about one of the greats of all time here a horse that perhaps uh, and arguably was bridging the gap back to the great Nijinsky in the sense that many of us who were on so many racetracks where he had won at the time were convinced that we had never seen in our lifetimes uh, a horse of his stature since the days of the great Nijinsky. And I mean, it was a privilege for all of us who, you know, got the opportunity to cover the story of See the Stars, to follow his exploits right through his two-year-old days, and particularly through his three-year-old career, which all culminated in that wonderful day. I was so lucky to be present at Longchamp on pre dark Sunday, on that first Sunday in October of 2009, when, you know, Mick Canan found a gap late on and came with this incredible burst of speed as the world saw uh, on, on the great stage that the Longchamp turf is in October. Just what a wonderful equine athlete See the Stars was, and that has to be one of my greatest ever racing days. 
Well, you've covered racing all over the world, Colin, and you mentioned Longchamp, you've been in, uh, down at Melbourne, but is there anywhere better than Cheltenham five minutes before the off on the, uh, of the Supreme Novices Hurdle? It's just an exceptional place, isn't it? Well, again, you've put your finger on it there. Five minutes before, the atmosphere is building up, and just, you know that moment when the off, you know, when the, when the white flag is dropped and the commentator announces they're off, and inevitably he stops for the next 15 seconds because the roar from the grandstands of anything up to 50, 60,000 people is just, it's just such a loud crescendo that you cannot hear any commentary anyway. And it's just the signal call or the, the clarion call that the Olympics of national hunt racing have gotten underway for yet another year. And the first race of the day signals that fact and the crowd just respond to it in this sort of up-tempo way that gives the meeting an absolutely unique atmosphere, the likes of which I have never encountered anywhere else on this earth. Don Runs winning the Gold Cup stands out as one of the great, great days. I think we all feel we rode... We know, Don, we know John Joe O'Neill was in the saddle, Dennis, but I think we all feel we rode Don Run that day because the screaming and the roaring, certainly where I was watching the race from, uh, was of such a level and such a crescendo that everybody... Don Run had thousands of jockeys that day. Everybody was willing the mare up that hill. And it was just incredible in the last 20 yards when slowly but surely she began to get up. The place just went wild with delight. It was one of those. Uh, it was one of those moments in sport and in racing when what's just happened before your very eyes transcends the nature of the story that you're covering, or the sport that you're involved in, and becomes an absolute news headline of the day. It becomes one of the great moments, one of the standout moments, not only of the day, of the week, the year, but also indeed of the entire century. Well, you brought all those reports with great style and great colour, and in your own inimitable well column. And this award, is, this award is very well deserved. Congratulations to you. Thank you very much indeed. Then.